Hi, welcome back again. Uh, we're going to be continuing uh, the analysis of piezoelectric uh, material properties with regards to the equivalent circuit analysis. And what we'll be going over first, I mentioned last time we went over the equivalent circuit where we applied a voltage across the material and we found it to be equivalent to being uh, applying a voltage across a piezoelectric material where we can calculate the stored energy. We had the different capacity components here, the damped capacitor and the motional capacitor and this kind of uh, was the converted mechanical energy and here we had the converted or the, uh, sorry the stored electrical energy and we had a total equivalent capacitor uh, which represented the uh, the input energy, which is the equivalent capacitor, which was the input energy electrical. So all of this together, uh, it helps us to understand the energy flow, and namely the piezoelectric coupling uh, factor. But now, what we're going to do is we're going to go over the case where instead of applying an electric field, uh, we apply a mechanical force to material. And then we want to note how do we model this into an equivalent system? And in this case, since we're applying a force, you know, it's convenient to describe your model and the parameters you're looking for or the parameters you have. So we have for, uh, stress, so let's just draw this force over here. So these are two springs, and now we're going to call this the damp spring. It's not really damp, but I mean, and we're going to call the top one the motional spring. So this, as you guessed it, is going to have to do with uh, mechanical energy and this one is going to have to do with electrical energy and we're going to be applying a force see these springs are attached okay to like a plate let's say and we're pulling both springs at the same time so basically the strain in each of the springs or the displacement in each of the springs the change in L so let's say it gets bigger the change in L which is like this much times 2. Basically that is doubled and not doubled but that that is equivalent for each of the springs. And now since we're applying the type of force we're going to be applying into the material is going to be mechanical. So these mechanical energy is actually going to be the stored energy and this time the converted energy is going to be the electrical energy or the yeah converted and electrical. So what we understood from the equivalent spring constant of a PL of any material. So let's say we have a block of any material, we're pulling on it with some certain force. Uh, it's the equivalent spring constant, which gives us this equation. Sorry, the force equals the spring constant times the change in the length. Uh, for for a block of material, let's say rectangular, uh, it is the area divided by the length times the compliance. In the case of piezoelectric material is going to be the elastic compliance under constant electric field. So this is the compliance. So this is the so we understand already we know Km. And now we want to find out what this other parameter is. Ks. Oh or sorry, Kd. What is Kd? And so in order to understand KD, we first have to go to the energy equations. So what's the energy of this converted, uh, you know, capacitor? I mean, the converted uh, electrical energy. So we have the electrical energy in this portion. And, you know, these, these two uh, representations, you know, are equivalent. <laughs> Except that one's applying force, one's applying um, electric voltage, one's applying voltage. But they're, they're, they're pretty much the same. So again, we have the uh, stored energy as this. But in this case, we can convert uh, the electric field. So we, have, we had polarization equals D stress. This is a common equation we know. Uh, then we can kick that equation and make it into electric field. And this is capital X. This is also capital X capital X equals what? 
because this is a case of constant um, dielectric displacement that's going to be used for the stress and strain at this point uh, so we have that equation so if we bring down this one we have the electric field as being equal to the d x over epsilon capital X SD kind of we put that there and we took it around so now we're ready to fill in the equation and, and this wasn't the uh, this was the energy the converted electrical energy so we want to again rewrite it uh, so we have one half epsilon x a l uh, d little x over e big x s d squared and what we're going to want to do is simplify this so we can get one half k delta l squared because this is the energy of a spring basically we we, we equivalent the energies when we find what would be the equivalent spring constant uh, so we further simplify the equation by adding by multiplying by top and bottom by l then we notice that since the strain is equal to delta l over l Uh, basically by multiplying x times l we get delta l so basically what we're going to do we have x squared here and we have one l here and one l here so combining those parameters together we actually end up getting a displacement and then this l has to be included because I multiplied by the same thing so it has to be it's going to have to be put under here So now what? This is the equivalent spring constant right here. That equation. So let me just rewrite that out. So the K, what's K? D, K M, sorry. Oh, sorry, K D is equal to epsilon X A L D epsilon x so if you wanted to do an equivalent spring model for a piezoelectric material this is what you would end up getting this is equivalent so you have this spring constant here and you have this one over here so we both you have these both spring constants basically now you know that any force you apply you'll have to get through these spring constants which actually add together so you can add these two spring constants together you can apply a force you can get you can you can apply a stress you can find the area by multiplying by the stress so you can find the sorry you can find the force by multiplying the stress by this by the area and then you can just solve for the equation easily so you notice that these specific components they're related to the converted energy and the stored energy uh, in the same case we had here we had the converted energy also in the, in the mechanical side and we had the stored energy in the electrical side so this kind of gives us the total energy, which is the energy input. And that's all related by this 1 minus k squared thing, which I showed you earlier. Now, uh, and you can also, another interesting thing is that you could also have done this problem by using strict, still using electrical energy. Basically what you would do, you would say, since we already know these, these, these parameters don't change. The dissipated capacitance and the, and the, um, emotional capacitance basically what we what happens when you apply a force is that you generate charge here and this charge is also applied here so when you generate charge on one of them you're going to be generating charge in the other when you're doing let's say work on the mechanical side you're going to be also generating charge on the other side so basically this charge equilibrium by applying a force or a stress uh, this charge appears on both. This is why, although you're only charging kind of one f one of these, when you're when you're applying a force, you're charging, uh, you know, you're 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 applying a force, let's say on on uh, an equivalent capacitor. Uh, but at the exact same time, you are charging both these capacitance, so which one is related with electric field, and one is related with electric field or polarization. The other is related with. Uh, um, with the strain. 
So, at, but at the same time, uh, you get both of those uh, relationships. Now, I want to briefly speak about um, the equivalent circuit and piezoelectric materials with regards to um, frequency response, and I'll have to do this pretty quickly because I only have five minutes left in this video. So the frequency response. For the DC response of frequency, and this is going a little bit ahead of this time in my lectures, but I'm just going to describe it. For the DC response, this 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 uh, this equivalent circuit is great for uh, for an applied electric field using these two capacitors. You can you can calculate all the parameters. But as we increase the frequency, um, we have mechanical resonance. In, form, in mechanical resonance, more energy is going to be stored uh, in mechanical energy, more mechanical energy. So to account for mechanical energy and to account for the resonance effect in electrical circuits, we need to use an LCR circuit. This and this kind of play the role in the exchange of the electrical, um, the exchange of potential and kinetic energy. Uh, these kind of uh, bounce back and forth uh, in their energies and their currents. And this material, this right here, the resistor, it governs the losses. So the loss is proportional to, this, to, the, uh, to the current. So basically, instead of only using this uh, uh, portion for the equivalent circuit, we have to use both uh, CD stays the same, but CM we get entire mechanical branch of the circuit. And this branch of the circuit is because we need a resonance. Because we know at mechanical energy, we have we know at resonance, we have much more mechanical energy uh, due to the accumulation of energy due to the resonance effect due to the mechanical resonance mode. And therefore, we're storing a lot more energy in this here, and this capacitor, and there's a lot more current. Basically, all the current flowing through here is through this uh, you know we have this equation and the integral uh, actually the derivative of this with time is current uh, d dt and then you want to do this again d uh, forgive me d d uh, I'm sorry about that um, and this, this is a uh, stress capital X so doing this, most of the current is going to come from here because this is going to be much bigger because the stress is going to be much more than the electric field applied in the resonance conditions. And therefore, uh, this is not a lecture to describe resonance and anti-resonance, but therefore we'll, ha we'll need to have a lot more energy in this capacitor versus this one for the same electric field, for the same voltage applied. But because we're at the resonance region, we'll need to be having a lot more current flowing here. A lot more current should be flowing in this one. And the only way we can get more current to flow in the top branch versus the lower branch, representing more energy in this capacitor, is by adding this resonance, uh, resonance type of uh, electrical circuit. So again, we have this electrical circuit. We started with something like this. But we need to add an inductor and a resistor for losses. Uh, inductor, I mean, add a resistor for to account for losses. So let me just draw that a little bit more neatly. And this is why we have this shape of the equation. It's the simplest equation to describe the resonance, or simplest formula, resonance anti resonance effect, uh, where we have the piezoelectric, where we have the capacitive current. Uh, from a, from the admittance from the impedance of the capacitor just going like this this is an advance don't worry if you're not understanding and if you're following the lectures from before I'll explain it more in detail later but this is the resonance effect uh, which is happening where more of the current is flowing through resonance and anti resonance uh, to the re to the mechanical part and I'll describe this anti resonance portion later but I believe this pretty much sums up why you need these two capacitors, how they store energy, how they relate to the piezoelectric material parameters, how you can even describe the material as an equivalent spring, spring uh, you know, system. Uh, you're applying a force, and then this is stretching, and this is getting some strain energy both ways. And uh, why we need these two components. This helps, this achieves resonance, and this achieves losses. Thanks for watching.